How does BIM help on a construction project? Personally, I thought everyone was doing BIM, but apparently not. And I'm not criticizing, I'm just saying it's a jam and you need to do it. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the game-changing magic of building information modeling. So is BIM needed on a project? What are the benefits if it is? What are some key things that we can do to really leverage it? And then also I'm going to share with you my experiences with it, which, which for me were quite amazing. So stay with us on this video. We're going to get started right now. So I, I am real. Like I, I did think that like the building information modeling thing was just a given. So I, and I was like, how, how did I miss this? And I realized, and I have sympathy. Some people don't have their budget. Some people weren't taught. Some people don't have their, their resources. So I'm like super sympathetic about it. I grew up with Hensel Phelps back in the day when BIM was becoming a thing. I remember being involved with BIM before Revit was even a thing, right? We were doing 3D on AutoCAD. So like, it was like way back in the day. So like we were pioneers with it. And I'll just tell you that like, uh, for me, it's a given, and I'll tell you that it enables so many other things that I really think it should be a given for you as well. We have the industry knowledge, we have the training, we know how to do it. Now it's just a matter of really deciding, yeah, we're gonna do this on every project. Another thing we should do is like and subscribe. Subscribe to this channel, I want you to have all these videos. And I want you to have all this content, so let's keep going. Let me tell you really quickly my experience with BIM. So I was asked to learn um, AutoCAD architecture, Revit, Tecla, and learn how to use programs like Navisworks Manage and Synchro. So I learned all of these things, right? I learned the softwares, I learned the application, and I was able to go to the AGC, uh, Building Information Modeling Certification Program, and learn about it. So I was on a design build project, and we had the modelers co-located. We had the BIM execution plan. We were jamming out. We stayed ahead of the TAC plan. We prefabricated all of the overhead. We prefabricated all of the head walls. I mean, it was amazing. And I'll tell you, not everybody's experience with BIM is amazing, but it was for me. And the reason is this. I stuck to the fundamentals. I was not choosing to look at the model as like some pretty picture. It wasn't eye candy. It was, no, we are really using this in the field for prefabrication. We are really using this for coordination. And this is a fundamental part of our lean processes and systems. And so I just want you to know that I personally have run the BIM group or the BIM efforts on multiple projects, specifically on that one design build project with one of my closest buddies. You'll know who you are when you hear this. And we had a great time and it enabled all other functions on the project and the project delivered early. And I remember Charlie Dunn one time telling me, he was like, Jason, you talk about tact, you talk about lean, but also how much of that is enabled enabled by prefabrication and how much of your prefabrication is enabled by BIM. And I was like, hmm, oh, that's a, that's a really good point. And I just realized, like, I always talk about these things because I always thought BIM and prefab was a given, but since it's not, we're going to talk about some keys today. Number one, flow depends on prefabrication, meaning you can tact out, which I've talked about in multiple videos before this one, a proper schedule where crews go from area to area in a flow, but you can't maintain that flow if you don't have the materials and the resources. And if we're stick building everything, there's gonna be a lot of variation to that. So flow depends on our ability to pre-coordinate and to prefabricate as much of the materials that go in the installation. And number two, prefabrication depends on building information modeling, right? We used to do it in 2D, but it's very difficult and you'll have quite a few mistakes and it takes quite a bit of time. And so nowadays, uh, the trade partners are fabricating off of their models anyway. So having a coordinated and integrated model is key. So you must have the BIM if you're gonna have the prefab. And remember, if you're gonna have the flow, you must have the prefab. Three, that means that BIM, building information modeling, must be a given for our projects because we must have prefabrication to flow. So here's what I recommend for every project. Obviously, when you're in the early parts of pre-construction, you will want as one of your number one priorities to identify your tact plan, your material procurement log, and you will want to identify three key things. What are the durations for your fabrication and your coordination? And you will also on your schedule say, how much time do I need for contracting 
and permissions. We always, before the project starts and after design, identify the window where you'll do those things and do your coordination, your trade partner release, and your fabrication. Once you have that, now you'll know the duration where you will organize and execute your building information modeling efforts, your coordination efforts by zone on a rhythm. Before that, you'll organize the team, you'll get your technology, you'll form your BIM execution plan, you'll make sure that you have all needed resources and you'll hit the start date on time with those modelers and with all of your planning. And you'll make sure that when you're done with the coordination that kicks off your fabrication for key milestones, start milestones for your work based on the tacted rhythm. So that's what I recommend on every single project, at least for the overhead, at least for head walls, at least for repetitive assemblies. Like it's just a given, it's just a must. And I would say nowadays, you're gonna look at it for the exterior as well. And when you do this, I'm gonna tell you that like, you're going to create so much flow because prefab isn't just about hitting the dates on time, but when you prefabricate and pre-coordinate using building information modeling, you find the problems months in advance. Like that's the biggest part of this, right? Do you wanna to go to the field, stick build it, and find the problems right then and there? No, because it'll stop you, it will slow you down. So prefab not only makes it easier to hit your durations, not only does it set up the workers successfully in the field, but it also finds all your problems ahead of time before they become roadblocks. It keeps your workers safer in factories with better bathrooms, better conditions, more stability, right? It reduces the chance for injuries and illnesses and accidents on the project site, and you end up with a better quality product. So it keeps people safer. It enables the schedule and flow. It gives a higher quality product in a controlled environment before it ever even comes to the project site. And because it's coordinated, you have a better ability, or no, let me actually say it like this. The owner's facilities management folks, they are able to like maintain the building because they were actually able to coordinate where valves and access panels and all of their interfaces go, right? So it's just, it. every aspect about it is lean. Every aspect is, is just, uh, amazing and makes for a better product, not only for you and the delivery, but for the, the client. Usually the only thing that I see that goes wrong with this is if you coordinate it wrong or if you do it at the wrong time, right? Because you can go coordinate the building and then you have massive design changes and then you have to do it again and now you spent twice the amount of money. But if you do it right, like I told you, base it off the tack plan between design and make sure that you're actually coordinating a final design in the right window so that you still have time to contract, you still have time to fabricate, you still have time for your permissions, then you're gonna be fine. And you'll only do it once and you'll make money. You'll spend a little money, but you'll make money and you'll have so much flow and so many other benefits that you, like me, will think this is just a given. We do BIM on every project. So in the description below, I'm gonna give you this list of key considerations and a list to some resources that you can access to start your own journey. Sure, BIM isn't the current fad right now, but it should be a given. It's just how we do lean construction. And I will say lean construction is, it's not a fad, but it's popular right now. And so with lean, also, also automatically comes BIM. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you have a great time on your BIM journey. If you ever need help, give me a call. On we go.